you see, 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 you see. You're in Thailand, boy. Boy, looking nice, you're looking nice. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> yeah, now I can see you guys. There we go. How are we? Yeah, man, we're good, good. man. <laughs> man, wicked to see you. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's a little bit different to a uh, cotton house, isn't it, Frosty? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, mate. You know what I mean? It's, it's looking like I'm very envious. So, of is that where you live in now? You live out there now, yeah? Yeah, moved here last year. The last time I was in Thailand, you know, same. I was when I was on the um Bangkok. This is my last time I was there, and I was outside the hotel now. Um, I was there playing for for Dave, yeah. and I'm there and I'm smoking my weed and all that. And then um, Dave decided to play a trick on me. So I'm there, like, and he got one of his mates to pretend like, they, like he was a police. All right? So I'm there smoking the weed. Like, you get what I'm saying? And this guy just comes up to me. Hey, what you doing? I'm saying, um, I tried to drop. What's, and he, you know, he saw what I was doing and all that. And he picked up the spliff and all that. And he says, Tom, you're going to jail with me now. You're going to jail. Listen here. I shit my fucking self, right? Because this is Thailand, you know? And I really... <laughs> Right, <laughs> I shit myself. Dave is there. I didn't even see Dave. Dave is laughing from some window up there, watching it all. And I'm praying, I'm begging this oh. guy. I'm like, I have money. How much money do you <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have money. How much money do you want? I can go to Cash Point. I can give you more money, right? <laughs> please, please. Is that an you? <laughs> Listen here. I'm, I'm thinking, like I'm thinking, this is Thailand, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking, this is it. This is like, this is like Midnight Express Listen now. here. I saw my family. I saw my son. I saw everything for the last time in my head. I was listening. Everything was just a big flash. I was oh. like, oh, no. I'm going to jail in Thailand. And the man was serious, you know? No, no. You come with me. You come with me. And I'm taking... I was like, please, please, please. And then I heard someone laughing. Right? I look up. I see David's friends of laughing. Oh, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. you know what? That is the cruelest... That is fucking just, oh, trick oh, ever. Oh. 30 years of V, guys. Wow. I know, where did it all go, right? Just fucking when in the flash, it feels like... I mean, you know, when I th really think, think hard, oh, it does feel like it is 30 years, but sometimes it doesn't. It's just like, wow, that went quick. Yeah, we're just, we're just living our life, you get what I'm saying? And, you know, day to day, week to week, year to year, we're just continuing and always looking forward, not looking backward. Yeah. So I think... That's the thing where you don't realise it because you're just looking forward to the next year and, you know, continuing carrying on what we're doing. You get what I'm saying? And you reach that 30 years mark. I mean, I think it was about a year ago, a year ago. So I completely forgot that we were going to be 30 this year. And someone mentioned it to me like, yeah, you know, um, you're not going to be 30 years. And I was like, what? <laughs> 30? Because it felt like we were just 25 just a few years ago. But because of the lockdown. Yeah. You kind of lose two years yeah, yeah, almost yeah, with yeah. lockdown. You get what I'm saying without even realizing. That's, so. Yeah, that's it's lockdown. Just, yeah, because do, when, I, when I look, I'm thinking it was just the other day we were doing 25 years of E parties. You get what I'm saying? And that's the scary part of it that five years have gone. So just like just the other day. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, wow. Did that just seemed like the other day. That was see, just the other day. Literally. Yeah, because you had a, I, I, I looked up some stuff and Dillinger popped up, one of your parties, a 20, your 25-year party, Dillinger just playing. The with day. You. <laughs> just the other day, and it's like five years, and you're like, wow. But, you, you know, you put COVID into that, probably it, it would seem longer, you get what I'm saying? But because of COVID, it seemed really soon. Yeah. But yeah, 30 years, man. And um, yeah, we're just really happy to still be going out there and like connecting with a young audience still also our audience as well that's grown up with us you get what i'm saying we're going to parties now and the ages of some of the people that know the history know all about me and frost know all about the artists on the label from the original artists to the new artists their fans right throughout you got so, so that is just like makes me feel like yeah you know what i mean we're really doing something good and special and that people love as well and um you know that makes us feel good yeah. it makes us feel proud that we you know what i mean Definitely, because I mean, the, the, way, the way that people we, we go out places now, and like especially when you, you see people with the tattoos, oh, do you know what I mean? Like all over the world, oh, everywhere oh, we go. I was in Shrewsbury. Do you know what I mean? People, everyone's got the tattoos and stuff. I was in Shrewsbury Saturday night, two tattoos in the party, all that. the way up bloody Shrewsbury, and 
you know, two two people are coming up to me and because they know that I like to see them now. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Look, Brian, and I'm there on the deck. So St. Jesus got it on his kneecap. Right on his wow. kneecap. And then another that guy. A, that's a lot of pain. Yeah, and, and then another guy <laughs> is on the ear. I've got pictures of them both. You get what I'm saying? I'm like, wow. And they're just coming up to me and saying, young kids, right? Younger than my, probably like after the age of my son. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So it's not even like that next generation, Dan. It's a generation, it's a generation after. after that, right? And they're saying, V. It's my favorite label. And I'm like, look at young kids and, you know what I mean? So that, that's got to be something to be proud of because, you know, there's so many great music, great artists, great labels out there. Young as well, yeah. young crews to coming see, through. To see, and that, all that. to see that young, younger, younger people, that the younger generation, just embracing the label and the music and, and, and the love that they show us. It's just like, it's crazy. That's man. what keeps us going. Yeah, it's what keeps us going, That's man. what drives us. You, you know what I mean? Saying, we get know? messages the love. all over, like, America and Canada. When do when you, was it 30 years of V party here? Yeah. Like, everyone wants, everyone wants I it. Mean, um, do you know what I mean? I, I was in the office with Gareth the other day, and I saw um, I saw some, like, Metalheads merchandise, and it, uh, it had, like, 25 years of Metalheads. And I was like, Gareth, the, tw that was a long time ago, but... They're still kind of promoting 20 because I think that there, there, there was some like pressing or stuff was late. Mm. And basically, what I'm trying to say is, I think we might have to stretch out three years of V as well because we just haven't got enough time this yeah. year. You know what? To reach. I think we might have to do that. Yeah. Because after us, I was thinking, oh, yeah. when the year's finished, there's no way we can carry on doing 30 years of V. But if Metalheads are doing 25 years of Metalheads, right? We're going to stretch it five out. Five years later, right. I think we can stretch it out. About it is year. We're not going to get to everyone this nah, year. No, nah, it's impossible. We're not going to make it to everyone this year. You know what I mean? America so wants it. America I mean, wants it. you guys might want us. You know what I mean? And if I, you I'd guys, love you out here. I'd, to get you out would be amazing. In Ireland, and what, that's going to have to be probably next year. So we're going to probably definitely um, extend it because, not because just like, because we could still DJ and do our thing, but because people really want to... Um, yeah, and we want to program it right. Yeah, and we wanna, people want you know to have this... 30 years of B party and celebrate with us because yeah. it is something momental, you get what I'm saying, and special. So, um, yeah. We're yeah, coming we're, to wherever you are. We need to make that happen then. V, yeah. V30, Australia, Australasia tour, Asia. Yeah. Off. I yeah. won't put you in a tent, Brian, don't worry. Don't hey. worry. We won't put you in a tent. <laughs> no, no, okay. in a tent, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's quite that right. he'll probably He'll probably need a naturist beach or something. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. give him a big tree so he can hug it. <laughs> I'm, I'm right with you. I'm right I'm with you. I'm embracing it. I'm loving it. Well, I'm Asia is the perfect place for your mate. That's yeah. real nature there, yeah, mate. Man. I, I, I seen some picture of Shabba out there one time, and he was just like in the, some sea with some big fish. He, he caught some big fish. Mo, sorry. Um, oh, I'm talking to um, somebody. I'll call you back in a bit, yeah? All right. All right, cheers. It's Moses. Look, Moses. Need for ah. mirrors. Need for mirrors, Moses. Yeah. yeah. That's been a long time. Was, was, I mean, he used to book me when I used to go to um, um, New Zealand and he used to be based in Christchurch. So he was the promoter in Christchurch. And that's yeah, well, I'm that's looking. when I was living in Perth. That's when I was running ATM Oceanic in Perth. So he used to come over to us a yeah. few times. Yeah. Jeff, he, he, Jeff he used to be in right? Adam. Was it, was it Jeff used to be in um, Auckland? Uh, yes, pressure, Jeff. Pressure. Yeah, pressure was Auckland, and um, that's where um, Christchurch is where I met Tully and Moses, and then me and Moses got talking, and he said he, that's how we um he ended up here in the UK because we, you know, I mean, I was playing for him, and I said, yeah, come over to the UK, man, and um, anytime you want a job or whatever, come and work for V. And next month he was on the plane <laughs> sitting outside. My I remember. Office, yeah. I remember, I remember yeah. telling <laughs> Reflect on the scene over the last 30 years and the scenes journey, the scenes demands, how has that shaped what you've done and what you've done under the banner of V? I think the game changes all the time, isn't it? Everything keeps changing it, you know? I mean, what, when we started 30 years ago to what how we got our, just everything, the way we go about DJing, the way we go about um, selling music, the way we go about producing music, the way we go about pressing music, the whole thing, the internet, the social media, everything, the game's completely changed. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, our artists is even, 
look to work with people now, how Different. easier it is Different. to to contact people. The, yeah, everything's completely changed. It's you completely know what changed. I mean? Completely changed. And, you know, I could probably say for better, but there's always um, one eye looking backwards saying, you know, things were always great. You know, you could find parts and things that were probably... You know, without trying to sound like an old bastard or <laughs> without an old gitter or an old moaner, you can always find things that you could say were better. You get what I'm saying? But moving forward, you got to say things are, you know, the, the whole thing is, is moving forward in a better way, bigger way, yeah, and in a good way. You get what I'm saying? But, yeah, and, but along the way, it's always going to be things that have changed and we can always get used to changes. So when things change, some people not fully on board with it you get what i'm saying and some people are willing to embrace changes and some people it takes time you know i remember when digital first started we were one of the last labels because i didn't trust it i was like nah man I mean, we're selling our records on digital and blah 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 i want to know every single unit that i'm selling because i had it in my head that if i press ten thousand records i know what i get when i sell those ten thousand records now um you know it's in the hands of someone telling me what I've sold, mm. you know? I've got to believe Spotify, I've got to believe Apple Music, I've got to believe all these people who I don't even know, but, you know, I've got to believe when they tell me what they've sold, you get what I'm saying, you know? So that for me, that is one of the biggest changes that, for me, leaves a very kind of clouded over it because it feels very kind of like, not very clear, there's a big great area it's with in, what's in going a lot on of, because, in a lot of things. Because it was to say, all right, then you know, my statement, you know, you sold 10,000 streams. Who to, who to tell me that it wasn't a hundred thousand yeah. streams? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I've got to believe so, you know what I mean. I've Everyone's got, got to take their Whereas word for I know it. that when I when I press ten thousand records, I know exactly what that mm. you get what I'm saying. And yeah. so, you know what I mean? And and even just like the way of promoting, you know, of course, you've seen it, you know, we, from from flyers outside clubs to now out uh, the internet and promoting it, social media. It's a, you know, you could be a promoter for for years and years and years. You're starting again. You yeah. got to learn everything again. You, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you knew before is almost irre irrelevant. You get what I'm saying? Because the game just keeps changing and it's a new way of going about things you get what i'm saying so if you want to keep up with things you've always got to be um, up for up for up for moving with the times the way how it is now if you don't embrace it because they've got this old thing just kind of like cornered now so if you're not in it and if, if you're out of it you're you're in the cold you get what i'm saying Simple because they've you know all the consumers are going to these places now you get what i'm saying I mean, I'm not like that, you get what I'm saying? Because maybe because I'm from an older generation, but kids now, whatever, they listen to music on their phone and, and on YouTube and all, you know what I mean? All different kinds of ways where... Different ways. It's mostly streaming yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and these people seem to have the monopoly on it. And it's either, this is, it's like, this is the way it's structured. You either do it this way or we don't do it at all. Do you know what I mean? Which is, you know, it's crazy. They seem to have a monopoly, and it's, it's like Brian said, we have to take their word on what they say. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I mean, for me, that is the um my biggest gripe, probably that you know, what I mean, in the music scene, is just that how the industry is kind of like got us got us up where you get them saying, you know, like with Spotify as well. You get them saying it's like everybody is just kind of drawn to Spotify now, Spotify, Spotify, and and it's like I, I got uh, I talk to artists as well and people and it's like you know what worries me is some artists now only want to work with other artists who have got a th loads of Spotify streams and my worry is if 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 everybody goes about because everybody's like oh you, you know what I mean like before you would just work with somebody work with somebody but now it's just like oh let me check their Spotify how much. Follower, and that worries me because that's gonna make talent or new talent harder to to to, to nurturize or come through. Because, 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 but that that's how everybody yeah. wants to work now. Because that's how they see yeah. it. It's like, oh, you know, I mean, to, to benefit their music, they want to come work with somebody that's got lots of streams. 
And for me, that is that's just one of the worrying things that you know I mean I see in in the changes or whatever going forward. But there's so much positive things as well. You get what I'm saying, you know, you know, the scene is completely opened up, it's massive now. I mean, I was on a train um going to Shrewsbury the other day, and I just saw this just these two young girls, and I just heard chasing status, some just come up out uh, of the conversation. I was like, so my ears pricked up, you get what I'm saying? And it's like and then I was like, oh, you know, Chase and State. She goes, no, 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 no. But um, something about they saw them at Glastonbury. And I was like, just straight away, we just got to, oh, I was at Glastonbury yeah, and yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. And, but they they are, they like drum and bass, but they didn't know really anything really about the underground or whatever, but they knew, you know what I mean? But they knew a bit about drum and bass. And, and this is good because this is how far it's reaching out now where they could, you know what I mean? Just people on the train and all that could have the same likes as myself now. You get what I'm saying, you know? And that's how far the music has gone out now where just normal people now, are, you know what I mean, are hearing our music and, and knowing about yeah. our music. There seems to be a, a real shift at the moment. You, you kind of touched on it. It's, there's a very song-driven drum and bass push at the moment isn't there like i mean so, somebody people. said to me the other day i forgot what they were comparing it with but there was someone saying something like uh like a year or two ago drum and bass was kind of like maybe 30 percent 40 percent the popular genre mm. but now it's like 60 70 compared to other music now that's mm. how much it's grown now you get what i'm saying mm. and that is astonishing that is Crazy. really great and you know, it's coming in all kinds of forms now. And, you, you know, you know, I go to drum and bass awards or not. I don't go to drum and bass, but I watch the drum it's and bass awards. people I've never heard of. And I'm hearing, you know, people like me and Frost, we've been like from day dot. We were responsible part, part of how this whole thing developed and all that. And this thing is so big now. You know, I'm seeing like the top 10 acts. I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The top yeah. 10 singles I've never even heard. Yeah. And I, I class myself as being out there yeah. on it. Maybe not as I used to, you <laughs> know what I'm saying? But out there and stuff. But it's not just like, that's just how big it is. Yeah, it's massive. It's just like. So, so yeah, you know, it's, it's, I'm learning every day about drum and bass and drum. We're still learning. Still. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Still. Still learning yeah. things and like, right, yeah, wow. And new artists, new yeah, things. It's new. Just, when I, when I sometimes listen to some of these producers talking, when they're talking amongst themselves, it just fascinates me, like the level of depth of of the way that they've developed as producers and the technology and stuff like that. It's just really deep, man. Do you know what I mean? Even the art of DJing now yeah. and all that, you get what I'm saying, you know, it's completely different now. I like, I'm at, um, I, did a, I did a set for um, DMB All Stars about a month ago on um, something called 360. And, um, you know, um, after my set, all the kids were just talking about like, wow, you, um, how come you don't use record box? Record box, record yeah. box. And I'm like, I don't use record well, do box. I? I don't use it either. But they, everybody was so shocked yeah. that I DJed and I'm still DJing like a dinosaur, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm, I'm still beat matching and I don't, all that. I don't, I don't, and everybody was like, just like, no. and talking to their friends, like, he's not using record box. He's not. And it was just such, I didn't realize it was such a big mm. talking topic, but for the kids to see that someone, because they've grown up with, See that wave thing, yeah, and no, all that. So to see, I don't use it either. They're like, wow, what's he got? You know what I mean? So that's how. Things are just like crazy, changed, you know what I mean? Whenever I go on and someone comes and asks me, I see them do something like that, I see that little wave thing coming in, <laughs> yeah. off they go. Yeah, yeah. So you keep you keep it traditional, yeah, pretty much from your... Oh, I just, it's just, yeah, I just, you know, I'm, I'm ready to embrace I'm it. I'm ready to embrace Ron, it. Exactly. Ronnie's always calling me at Ronnie's size, it's like, Brian, you got to use record box. You got to use record box so you can you can mix in those long ass intros quicker. You get what I'm saying? Because you know what I mean. It gives you the, um, yeah, the just, opportunity the point, to just you know get to the beat, get to where you want to go. And I'm just still kind of like just mixing it in from. And so probably like when he's always having a go at me, you know what I mean? Ah, rah, rah, rah. I'm gonna show you how to do. It. I'm gonna show. It. And you know, because I've got the program. I've got the program yeah, in my ass. I will embrace and I it. it. I was like, oh, and someone's like, oh, you got to put all your shoes for. That's the long bit of us. <laughs> it is, it is that is the long, long bit of us. You gotta start you gotta all your tunes. You gotta, that's, that's right. You're gonna take you a couple of days or oh. so like that. But you know what? 
I'm gonna do it because it's 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 gonna be worth it. You get what I'm saying? I haven't I haven't transitioned really to record box. I've got vague comfort with it, but not really. I'm a Serato user myself, and I've been years for years, well, and that's you only just stopped using the CDs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Do you ever, do you play any vinyl or um, dub sets now? Uh, no, no, mate. The last time I played vinyl was at some pandemonium reunion party. Me, I thought, yeah, pandemonium, pandemonium. Let me embrace the the nostalgia vibe of pandemonium. You know what I'm saying? So I dubbed out all my vinyl, went down there, and the place was just needles was jumping all over yeah. the place, and I just oh. felt like I wanted the fucking floor to open up and to swallow me because I felt like everything was jumping. And then, um, God rest his soul, um, Stu Allen came on after me, and he had all his old school on on CDs, and um, and he just come in and just just nice up the place, and I was like, nah, why the fuck did I have to be so nostalgic about this? You get because I got this stuff on MP3, yeah. but I just thought. That crowd would want to see yeah, no. the old vinyls and the old dubs going on. Ooh, oh, never again, mate. Because the thing about never it as well, the way the decks are set, you have to keep readjusting the decks. Yeah. And the decks, people well, they used to work back in the day. Yeah, people said, don't, people don't, people don't, like, to people don't seem to have, yeah. That, it's like people ain't like resetting their decks. And when they're putting the decks out and they're digging out decks yeah. years ago, I don't think attention, to, don't think the attention to detail on turntables Do you know what I mean? yeah. or, or, or what they used to be. No, That's they're not. There's more focus on the CDJs or whatever. And so, um, you need extra long fucking arms so that you can reach them because they're so far one end and the other. Yeah, that as well. Yeah, yeah. One's there, <laughs> one's there because all the CD players yeah. are in between. Anyway, I had a nightmare. That kind of made me think. You know what? Maybe if I was to go to a radio station or whatever, where it's more secure, mm -hmm. but to go to a club or whatever, nah, I yeah. can't see that happening. Because people are like, yeah, I want you to do a dub plate set. And I did one at Fabric as well. That's another thing. I did a dub plate set at Fabric and everybody just played dubs on CD yeah. or USB. And there's me cutting all these dubs at Music House and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I'm like, fuck this shit, man. You I'm know a, what I mean? Everybody just I'm turned a, up in their USB yeah. stick and I was like, I must have spent at least three, four hundred fucking. No, that's not playing the game, is it? You were playing the game, there. That's cheating. That's cheating. Because for me, dub plate set was dub plate and all. And people thought, but, fuck it. But Let even it. the word dub plate now is kind of like this is this is not the same. You know what I'm saying? You know what people call a dub now is just a new tune that they've just made. Yeah, and every, <laughs> a new a dub, a dub is just something you just made. Well, we used to call it a tune back in the day, but now it's classed as a dub. Oh, I've got lots of dubs now. Yeah, I've got to go out ten, and rinse my new dubs. Yeah, 10 <laughs> tunes now. Your new tunes. They're not dubs, yeah. right? Yeah. You take it back I guess you guys are in, some, in, in a, some sort of luxury position, being the head honchos, you know, be, being behind V, um, that you don't have to necessarily adapt to every fucking last little... Uh, no, well, you know what? Listen, we, we've always did what we it's, want. It's we, important for us to, to maintain our identity and how we want to do things and how right. we want to... That's very important to us. Yeah, yeah. In, in regard to that, you know, things change all the time. And, you know, they got this. But it's very important for us to stick to how we are. And that's what makes yeah. us unique. And, and for us to be ourselves and yeah. not be influenced too much by, by, everything. This, by everything. Yeah. And that's why, you know, we always kind of like just analyze and we're not quick to just... I mean, you know, you listen to the B sound. It's basically, you get what I'm saying? All right, then the tunes are more modern, but the sound continually is just... Basically the same from day one, you get what I'm saying? Sure, this is one of the things I was going to say. Like, I mean... <coughs> you just know the B5. The, you, you've, you've ma somehow managed to... Like, I, I can't really think... If I, I'm being really honest here, and this isn't just blowing smoke up your asses, but I can't really think of one label out there where if you took away every other fucking label in existence, it would still define... The entirety of jungle drum and bass. I yeah, think you've got the I spectrum think, in there, but your sound still somehow. I think a lot of that has got to do with um. Well, you know, Frost has been producing again more, but basically, you know, what I mean, we're we're, we're DJs. Mm. That's what we've always been DJs. And when when we started V recordings, you know, we were DJs, and most labels are started with producers and it's in their image. The label kind of takes off in their image. So if they're a producer and they make jump pop. You know, the majority of the music probably on their label, 8% would probably be jump up or whatever. You get what I'm saying? If they make techie or whatever. But you know what I mean? You know, so the labels are a kind of mirror of themselves. Whereas me and Frost, like we DJ and you know what I mean? 
we got a rich history background of different influences of music. You get what I'm saying? And um, that's basically, you know, when we're when we're listening to music and all that, we need to feel hear some of that or those influences in our music. You get what I'm saying? In in the music that we're releasing, putting out, or that we play. You get what I'm saying? And so that's what it's about. You get what I'm saying? It's like we're just, just not into one. Yeah, it's a, you know, as much as we wanna we wanna embrace other things and new new ideas and new we have to maintain our our individuality and our sound and our and our vibe you know what i mean it's really important and that is what's meant that's what's kept us here for all these years and kept the label just you know what i mean consistently consistent you know what i mean with its yeah. sound you know but you also bizarrely managed to have this you know when people think of v they think of brazil um as well they think of bristol you know, you've, you've managed to have this sort of reach that actually people can literally, like, I don't know another label that does that, where you can go, oh, that has that there and there and there. Like maybe one, so you might be able to say, okay, that's a very Eastern European oh, shit, uh, neuro -y sound or something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You've got these different. But you know what? It's still going to have funk. It's you, still going to have the funk in it though. It might be like whatever. Yeah. That, like you said, neuro, you know what I mean, neural sound or whatever. But there's gonna be a funk and some soul in it or something. You get what I'm saying? You know, you know, even if it's like you know, Edward Shoptical function or whatever. You get what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't their typical um, bacteria gas mark mm. or whatever. You listen to function, and there was a funk in yeah, it. You yeah, get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And whatever, and that that made that them, little, you know, yeah, Definitely. and and you know, driver. The flip side it wasn't nothing like what. What they normally did, you get what I'm saying, and so that's the reason why them guys said, you know what, this has to come on to V. Yeah. And same thing with brand new funk, Adam yeah, F. You yeah. get what I'm saying, you know, man, they, they make them tunes, and as soon as they make it, they're like, wow, mm -hmm. this is. Let me talk to Brian and Frost about mm -hmm. this because it, it feels straight away, it just feels it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just, oh, and, I remember that. First time. When other artists, when other artists come to us because they say, you know what I mean. I got something and it's V. Yeah. And they could easily have put it out themselves or whatever, but they're like, you know what? It's, 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 this it's, has got to come out on V. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow. Wow. Well, that's pretty influential in itself, the fact that people yeah. are choosing that. It's nice to know that you that you got that, you know, you got that, you got a sound and a certain vibe that people just identify with you straight away. Like, you know, yeah. producers like mm -hmm. Brian said, they could be making a tune and then all of a sudden they just think, well, this is a V. Like it is. They just, yeah. they just feel it. There's no. Yeah. They might not have went in there intentionally to do it, but you know, I think the best things are all born out of, of, yeah. out of that. But I think back in the day, you know, the labels all had that distinctive sound. You know, a producer would come up, make a tune, and he'd be like, "This has got to go on. This is good looking. This is, you know, what I mean, it had that good looking sound." Or yeah. you know, um, you know, someone would make another tune and Liquidy and Fabio mm -hmm. go and create. So you know, what I mean, we had that this, you know, very distinctive sound. Now. Um, you know, I kind of think that some of that is getting lost at the moment. I mean, you got your North Quarters and you still got a few labels that very got a very distinctive sound and all that. You get what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, you know, um, kind of all morphed, personally, I think, now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot has. Uh, and you maintain. So what what, what, we, what are we looking at for the future with... Um... V30 celebrations and uh yeah well the party continues i mean um <laughs> our next stop is um croatia croatia on our sunday. sunday we go to um hospitality on the beach and then nice. we got our um, we got a big one coming up the week after in bristol yeah at the motion nightclub and then we're going to um we're, we're, we're doing a, a stage at we are here festival we're doing boom town as well we're doing um, a night at Sun and Bass. We've got Birmingham still um, on the agenda. And then me and Frost are going to be doing like a 30 years of reset in Manchester for Warehouse Project. Um, and there's a few other, um, we've got New York lined up. Yeah. And um, we're trying to get on. Toronto some, over the line. Uh, some other, yeah, Toronto. Some, yeah. So there's more in my head that I just can't remember. But yeah. So the party is going, we're, I'm doing an album at the moment, Carl. I'm working on this compilation just like for 25 years of V. I always put myself under pressure. When I was doing 25 years of V, I was like, man, I want this to be bigger than Planet V, which was never going to happen. You get no. <laughs> but that's how, I, that's how I got a think in my head. Yeah. When I was doing Planet V, I wanted it to be bigger than V Classics. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. 
you always kind of that's the benchmark for me planet b b classics the benchmark and when i did future um that was the bet i was like you know what that's that's what i want to try to achieve that noise that vibe that that when we put out those albums i'll hit the scene and now everybody in the scene kind of like was influenced by those albums you get what i'm saying and you got people even now saying those albums changed my life mm -hmm. and just like you know what i mean oh well, this, this is for, you know what i mean so i was trying to create that with future and um it was a really successful album we put it out banging COVID times as well. So as soon as we put it out, COVID started a couple of weeks after. But it really did well. It went to like number one in um the not the drum and bass charts, the proper, you know, beatport chart and Juno chart. So that was really good. It sold really well. We got a lot of number ones on it. So the pressure's on for me to kind of even get near that or better it for this one. Um so we're halfway there. Got some big tunes on there that we are um, excited about. And we're going to try and drop that about sort of um, September time when we do the, the Fabric party because we're going to end off the year at Fabric because that's probably where, where we had our best. Fabric was where we, where we done we done the first ever party in Fabric. We yeah, the club I was there. You guys yeah. had me there. You gave, yeah. I, I had the camera. You, you, you gave me the actors. I was running around the back, the back of the stairs. Have you got that footage, man? Have you got, have, have you got that footage? It's all, it wasn't video cameras, for all oh, photos, but yeah, I, yeah. there will be some. There will be some exhibits. Yeah, man, even like, photos from that, here night, yeah. that was a nostalgic night. That was, uh, I don't even think I've got any pictures from that no, night. Nothing. nothing. And it's just a shame because, you know, a night like that, and we got no images, no pictures, and nothing like that. And it was an iconic night because I remember going to Fabric the night before, and they were still painting the building, still painting, putting on the toilet doors and things like was that. It the it first was the first party there? Yeah, yeah, we were, first I, party. I was scared. I was like, you know, I actually thought we were a guinea pig. They were just like, oh, <laughs> let them have it. And if it's not ready in time, mm. then it doesn't matter. Because the night before, workmen were still working yeah. in the club all over I remember the when club. I went in there, they were still putting the bulbs in. Yeah, still working on the club. And we was like, boy, well, is this going to be ready for tomorrow? But, you know, once you turn down the lights, you don't see that nothing. Was it, man. That queue outside, that was man. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That was ridiculous. The maddest queue that ever crazy. I've ever seen outside a that club, man. It's that like, was insane. I've got a couple Around of the buttons. building. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's where we're, we're going to finish off the year and have the launch party for the album and stuff. So, um, yeah. Yeah, amazing. Oh, how exciting. Oh, part, part of me yeah. wishes I was back, back well, there for that. You're all right where you are. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna make it happen we're, for you we're guys. Make it happen for you. We're coming Trust in. me. We're coming in and bring, bring the love. Just want to say big, big, big love to all the artists that have made be what it is right now. You get what I'm saying? You know, from the beginning, from the Bristol boys, which kind of paved it and and set it. You get what I'm saying? And and for some people, it's still the V sound and and all the producers and artists that have been influenced by that sound and all that, you know what I mean? From from them days there to now, you get them saying, you know, you talk to Voltage and Serum and all these new producers and, you know, they're all influenced by that, that original V Bristol sound. So, um, you know, just V would have never been here without these guys, you get them saying? So I want to just say big up to them. And, and then, you know, of course, you know, Brazil has been a very big part of the label as well, you know, from when we met Marky and Pateev, right through now with Elside, Alibi and Level 2 and the guys that are bringing the fire to the label right now and all the artists, Paul T, Ed, you get what I'm saying, Command Strange, everybody that is just made be the label that, that we love, you get what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I, I can't thank them enough, man, because they've all come in and they've all bought into the V sound and the, the V vibe, you get what I'm saying? And they've all felt like family, you get what I'm saying? You know, every one of these artists is, you know, they feel like family. They're not just artists on the label. When we see them, when we're out with them, we're like family, you get what yeah. I'm saying? You know, with Paul, Ed, Command Strange, Elside, Alibi, Everyone. Die, Love Cross, them, like, you know I mean? Everybody. They're like, they're like, they're they're like, like, especially you, when I see Command Strangers, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't <laughs> be on B and Slater. He's yeah. my, like my little yeah. brother. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. you can't be on B and not be in the family. No, it's a family yeah. thing, This is not just something I just watch that, them, watch everything that saying. they do, enjoy, you know what I mean? Like Slater, I just watch, 
like watching what he's doing outside of yeah, man. It's, 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 you know, and, and everybody else embraces everybody else, and so it's just like one big, long connected family. And we need to have a proper B reunion. All the <laughs> artists is just playing from Roddy, everybody. It'll be difficult though with all the yeah, bloody difficult. agents and oh, the managers man. now. But, yeah. like, oh, I heard you're going to talk to me, Brian. <laughs>
I'm so into you And I can't get out if necessary. Flash flares up, 
I follow every signal cause I care enough I ain't a guardian but I'll protect with bare love Reverse like house scenario, I'm there bruv Morse code, SOS, our life save trust In the depths of darkness when it's dangerous In the heat of hell when every flame busts In Antarctica, I saw with my way just Shine your light If you're out there on your own, shine your light Need to find your way home, shine your light We out here when you need to shine your light Shine your light If you out there on your own, shine your light Need to find your way home, shine your light We out here when you need to shine your light
strenge, strenge, strenge.
you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. Excellent. I've just um, I've just printed out your list of rants. Yeah, I mean, I'm struggling. You get what I'm saying? Because I didn't really want to come on here and sound like some miserable old fart that was just miserable with the whole world. You get yeah. what I'm saying? No. All right, so I was a bit sceptical about doing this because I want to be happy with the whole world and everything. But you know what? That is a damn lie. You know, no one's happy with the world. You get what I'm saying? But my real rants, you get what I'm saying? I didn't, you know, a personal to me, you know what I mean? <laughs> I get it. I get it. I'm going to start with a rant um, and I want to get, get your vibe on it. Then I'm going to let you have your rant, get whatever you need to get off your chest. And, and then we're going to go to the light sided um, end of life and talk about some funny stories from your career. So first off, I'm going to give you my rant and feel free to disagree when, when I've got it out there. If you don't agree, that's absolutely fine. But I'm going to be coming from, because my background is commercial radio, so I'm going to be coming from that perspective with it. But what I'd really be interested and curious about is whether my rant about commercial radio kind of holds true for the drum and bass scene. Okay. So we'll see. All right. So my rant is um, when I was working at, at the radio station, the last radio station, um, for a while I was the only female presenter. So they were really aware of this. and They wanted to correct that. Um, the other thing is we didn't have very much social media engagement. Like we put stuff out there, the radio station, but there wasn't a lot of interaction. So they wanted to improve that. So they ended up employing um, a female presenter who was, um, she'd done some community radio, mm -hmm. um, but professionally she was an underwear model. Okay. So that was her job professionally. And she had over a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Um, so I'm not saying that's the only reason she was employed, but that was absolutely one of the factors and the bosses were very open about that. Um, so I'm not saying she couldn't present. I'm just saying that that was a factor. Now, why? That's, that's my anecdote from my experience of commercial radio. But why it's a bit of a, a rant for me or I've got a bit of beef with it is it concerns me that maybe people are being employed based on metrics or partially based on metrics, i.e. if they've got a big social media following, as opposed to whether they're necessarily the best person for the job. And why it concerns me is I know a lot of really talented producers, singers, MCs, etc., DJs, etc., etc., and they're introverts. And introverts are way less likely to document their life and post on social media. It's just the way it is. So are we going to then alienate all the introverts who are brilliant artists? Yeah. I don't know if this resonates with you with the drum and bass scene, but I'm just wondering, what do you think of my rant um, and does it translate? With the drum and bass scene, I think it, um, I think it resonates with, with, with the, the whole world right now and our... The world is, and I think um, you, you know, I'm hundred percent behind you with that. You get what I'm saying? That's that's something which I think a lot of people would agree with you. You get what I'm saying? That um, in all kinds of what, whether it be in music, in all kind of walks of life, this is how people are getting judged now, unfortunately, by um likes and and um you know followers or whatever and you know um you know if you're not and if you're not into that or you, you know you haven't got that sort of personality to um to gain these likes you get what i'm saying you know um your talent or skills whatever gets very overlooked now because that is what people are looking at now followers and stats or whatever and you know um you know, I see it with within the, my industry with with um, you know, DJs or performers getting booked because they're they've got more gain on social media. You get what I'm saying? And I know some great talented producers or whatever, and because they haven't got the personality to embrace the, the social media, they really get overlooked, and it's really hard for them now. You get what I'm saying? And I find it a shame. And it even goes a step further where people only want to work with people that have got a lot of likes or a lot of followers now and so real talent is getting harder to come through because 
people don't want to take a chance on somebody who hasn't got a lot of followers because it's an advantage for them to work with someone that's got a million followers. And so people are overlooking if that person with a million followers is really talented. No, he's got loads of followers, so it's going to benefit me. So, you know, uh, you can take that concept and bring it everywhere, not just um, in your job or whatever, but I just think that's the world, unfortunate world we're in right now where social media is 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 a big, you know, it's nearly everything now, you get what I'm saying? And as a DJ, you know, I've got to be, I hate it. Personally, I hate it, but I've got to embrace it for my work and stuff like that. You get what I'm saying? I've got promoters from all day, every single day, want to turn, I feel like a, a notice board because everybody's just posted, share this, posted, share this, and, and blah, blah, blah. So I'm in that bubble as well. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, like now it, it's just part of life. So yeah, I, I, I fully agree with you there. I mean, I could go on and on and on <laughs> about this one here. You get, you picked a real good one because, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's the world we're in. So it's not just you going through that. I think that's how everything is kind of, looked at unfortunately now and that's you know that's the unfortunate life that we've sold ourselves to buy um with social media you know of course it's got its gains and it's got its good things and its benefits that we love and oh, stuff yeah. like that but you know there's a lot of um you know negative not negative but for me not really um good things about it you get what i'm saying and mm -hmm. people get you know and people I just, you know, people are so easily manipulated or whatever. And it's like, I, 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 you know, I feel like not just the social media thing, but I just feel upset with the people as well for being so easily brainwashed and not being able to look beyond these things. You get what I'm saying? Because, all right, and then you're saying the social media there, but we've all got a brain and we, we, we you know what I mean? We're not stupid. And so if you want to do something, why have you got to let social media tell you can't you can't you think and do it for yourself and judge for yourself i, w I would just want to say amen amen <laughs> uh, yeah you know it's, it's, it's all the sheeps out there that is following this system that yeah. social media has put up there that is the problem as well you get what i'm saying because yeah we do have a choice we can break we have a choice you get what i'm saying but no we prefer to just like oh you know go the easy route you get what i'm saying and oh that's popular that's big because everyone else says so or because social media tells me so you get what i'm saying absolutely so but do you think that there's going to be i i'm hopeful actually so as much as it's around i'm hopeful that um because i think that everything in life goes in cycles right so i i think that we're going to come to the end of that because the people that were really captivated at the start of social media, obviously it's, it's, it's morphed, you know, it was, it was my space and it was Facebook, then, you know, Instagram, and now it's TikTok. There's all these different things and they do go through cycles, but they go to younger people. And when those younger people grow up, I think we care, like, I, you know, I use things differently now. So I think there's going to be a, I, I think, and I hope there's going to be a saturation point. What do you think you can do in your industry? Not just you personally, it's not all on your shoulders, but do you, what do you think the drum and bass industry can do to kind of avoid that whole, let's let's call it a popularity contest because call a spade a spade. What, what well, can the drum and bass industry do? It's going to be hard because it's not, it, this is not something that is, it's just, it's, it's, it's life. It's, it's how we live now. You get what I'm saying? So, it's going to be difficult. You get what I'm saying because we've sold ourselves to this, 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 this machine. So we've gone. You know, we. It's like another one of my rant was Spotify. You get what I'm saying, and like you know what I mean. For all the good it brings, you know what I mean. It's like we've sold ourselves to this big machine that this in this thing that I got no idea about. I mean, you know, I'm old school. I used to. I've started a label, I've been running, you know, we're 30 years, that's why I'm talking to you now, 30 years of V, and I've been in the music business even probably 10 years before that, so I was, you know, all about vinyl, and I remember the days where if I pressed 10,000 vinyl and sold 10,000 vinyl, I knew exactly what the sums were. Now, we've we're, we've um sold ourselves to an industry 
where they can tell you what you've sold without you having a clue. You get what I'm saying? Mm. You know, because we're in this digital era now where it, it took me a long time as a label to, to adapt to it because I was like, hold on a sec. So somebody that I don't even know called Apple or, or Spotify or iTunes or whatever is going to tell me that I've done 10,000 downloads when I could have done 50,000 downloads and I've got to believe them. Yeah. And yeah. everything's okay with that. There's, you know, the transparency is so like in any other thing that you do business with, there would be more transparency in your business. You get what I'm saying? But all of a sudden in this business, somebody can say to me, oh, yeah, you've done 10,000 streams. When I've done 100,000 streams, but I've got to believe that I've done 10,000 streams and I've got no way of finding out if it's true or not. And so mm. I'm like, how did we sell our, how did we manage to sell ourselves to this industry that this this thin ear called you know this digital these digital platforms and be so blind to what's going on and yeah. and believe people that I don't I don't even know Spotify is I don't know these people but they tell me how much music I've sold and I've got to believe them you know I would like to believe that it is true but you know what this business is like you know <laughs> you <don't> know. <laughs> Yeah. everybody are all crooks out there you get what i'm saying so why am i gonna believe what well, you know yeah but this we've sold it's too late we've gone down this road already and yeah. you know, every year you got every artist saying oh i've done ten thousand streams or you, spotify give them this little thing to tell them how many streams they've done over the year or whatever and everyone's mm. like happy about this and i'm like wow you get what i'm saying you know i mean it's it's created a, a system where if you, as an artist, you make an album, you can only promote one track on this. on this. So it's like the creativity of the artist is, is almost, it's hard to kind of visualise and hear it because of this the way this whole thing is set up. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And but we've sold ourselves to it and we've only got ourselves to blame because we let it happen. I don't um, know that you had a choice, though, did you? Really? There... Well, you know, I mean, you had people like the Beatles and all that old. And I remember, they, they, look how long they held that. There was yeah, some people, true. I mean, we held that, but the majority, I held that for a long time. I was like, nah, I'm not doing this digital. But then if I find myself, if you're not in it, you, you get what I'm saying? Then you're yeah. nowhere, you get what I'm saying? Because yeah. every, everything was on these platforms now. And so, mm -hmm. like, all right, then I could still, like, we still try to do things direct on our sites, but it's nowhere as beneficial yeah. as yeah. being on these platforms because this is where all the mass audience are now. So exactly. you kind of yeah. like, you even you know, when, when the Beatles have got to say, okay, fuck it, we've got to just jump on what you get saying. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, yeah. you know you've been beaten, you get what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. yeah, that was Sometimes your run. you can't beat them, you got to join them. That was your rant turned into, turned into my house. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. That's that's what this is all about. It's about having a chat and kind of clearing the air and just seeing seeing what people's vibe is on on different subjects that are close to your heart or or kind of irk yeah, you. And yeah. I think you know, actually, joke aside as well, it's really important to have these conversations because if everyone's oh, just yeah. thinking this stuff and keeping it in, nothing's mm. ever going to change. The more yeah, we have these kind of conversations, yeah. other people hearing this are going to be like. Oh my, Brian, yeah, that's exactly what I think. And the more it's talked yeah, that's, about, yeah, that's why you got like you, you got these little platforms like, like Bandcamp and stuff, which kind of like you know yeah. uh, are there to help the artists a bit more. So I've got to say, big up to going out to those little things that are happening right now because you get what I'm saying. You know, this thing is this monster. These monster digital platforms are really kind of suffocating the um the way uh, we like to express music and push music and um. You know, you, you know, for me, it's like, you know, I grew up in an era where you bought an album, you get what I'm saying, and you, you, you bought it for a certain track, but you ended up liking another track or other tracks of the album because that's that's the only way you, when you bought the album, you had to buy a full album. And now, you know, my artist is there, do an album, and 
which is good. I'm not saying it's bad that you got choices of, oh, I can just take this track off the album, buy this track, but then I just think you're losing, you're not getting the creativity and, and the, what this artist is, is trying to give to you when he's trying to give you an album and you're just going to buy two tracks off it. You're never going to get to like that fourth track or that fifth track that you didn't buy because you've only just bought the ones you liked off it. And so I just think, you know, these just little things like that, you get what I'm saying, it's just like, really got me ah, yeah you know what, I mean? what though on that brian i've started literally in the last year <laughs> makes me sound like a dinosaur but i don't care um i got out my old um cd player mm -hmm. right it's even got a cassette deck in it and i've started listening to my cds from start to finish yeah you know they're all from like the CDs. 90s just like the vinyl CDs as well, because when you bought a CD, you bought the whole CD and then you buy it for a certain track, but then you listen to the whole CD and you're like, oh, you know what? I'll be for this track now, whatever, but you don't have that choice anymore because, well, you can, you can still buy it, but... You can, yeah. Album sales have gone right down yeah. now because people can just buy the track they want off the album now, just so, you know, you don't have to buy the old album. And that's kind of making the artists don't really want to even do albums anymore because they're just thinking, what's the point in doing an album? And so that's, for me, a beautiful thing that we don't want to lose artists is making albums. You get what I'm saying? And just making yeah. tracks, 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 because I just think that's really personal. When you when an artist does an album and you can get a body of their work and they can be more expressive, whereas if they're just doing singles, sometimes it's maybe they're just focusing in on clubs or whatever, you know what I mean? Or a certain audience, but when they're doing an album, they can kind of widen their vibe a bit more and they can just kind of do different genres or whatever and explore their vibe a bit more. You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And I mean, as a listener, you get you mm. you feel like you get to know the artist more when you go yeah. on that journey and you listen to, yeah, that's to right. everything. So yeah. absolutely. But again, I like even when I have a rant, I always like to find the positive or where things can go. And yeah. I truly believe that with album uh, vinyl sales, apparently, being higher than they've been for over 20 years right now i think we're going to have a resurgence oh please yeah we no, still I, do, we still do vinyl we still do vinyl arm at our label but it's yeah. very limited amount now because you know i think not, things are going to go backwards i think because right. with, our, with yeah. this summer base scene you know we've got all the younger kids coming through yeah. which is wicked the fact that you know i could have a i don't but i could have a grandchild <laughs> that's into the music i could have a child that's into the music you know yeah. and and there's and the generation above me so i i love the fact that we're all listening to it but i think those of us that were maybe there at the beginning and we're raving then our our perspective is different and maybe we have well, of course we have different values because we grew up with it and we listen to it in different formats so i think the the younger generation are going to drive a certain direction and we go with that and that's cool but i think the older ravers are going to drive a different direction that's that's what i think sorry I've, yeah I've, I mean, that's what i think so yeah, um, hopefully Hopefully that's what we're going to do. Um, all right, so we've had a little bit of a rant. I, I, I had to look at your uh, list here and there were a few things that really kind of popped out to me. Um, oh, God. I'm going to go with <laughs> first... Oh, <no. laughs> there's so many. But I'm going to go with this one. You said uh, a rant is people telling you to stop talking during your podcast. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. You know, I mean, I do a podcast, a B recordings podcast. And basically, you know, it You know, um, it used to be um, a radio show. We used to do a show on Ministry of Sound Radio. And, um, you know, when we used to do this nightclub called Movement at Bar Rumba, and we used yeah. to do Ministry of Sound Radio before, you get what I'm saying? So it was, oh, nice to just have, like, guests and all that that were playing at the club on the night. They used to pass through, you know, Dillinger, Marcus Interlex, whoever it was, all the big artists, they always tally. They all stopped by before the show, and we used to just have a chat. Mark, DJ Mark, he used to play, like, just play music and stuff. And so the show just carried on, and it carried on. And then I decided to turn it into a podcast. So the format has always been the same, chat, music, blah, blah, blah. But now people are just like constantly, constantly just telling me to shut up. You get what I'm saying? And like, <laughs> for me, the show is about promoting the music because, you know, I remember, well, over the, uh, lately now, it's not so faceless. You know, drum and bass is getting that face again. But over the last, like, go back 10 years ago, drum and bass was very faceless. You say to somebody, 
drum and bass, they would probably say Goldie and um, I don't yeah. know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Goldie, maybe, friction, yeah, yeah, and it, but whatever, maybe a Ronnie size or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah Ronnie, Ronnie, yeah, Ronnie size, whatever. But it was very faceless. Now you got your people like Nia Archives, and you got you know, it's it's getting more of a face again, drum drum and bass. It's you know what I mean. Definitely. Yeah, really popular and all that stuff now. So um I kind of forgot what I was what was the question. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that um you know like you you've been doing this podcast, it was a radio that's right, yeah, yeah. So, are telling so they, the podcast. So so basically the podcast is about promoting music on the label, it's a V recordings podcast, so it's about pushing the artists, pushing music, and also um you know, like I said, drum and bass can be so faceless and you don't get a lot of information or whatever. I mean, now there's cool FM, there's lots of stuff now where you can get info, whatever. But so I just thought, you know what? It's my duty to kind of not just play music, but give people information about the artists, where they can find the tracks, what the tracks are called, and probably even get guests in and just give the music more of an insight instead of just playing music but people just don't still don't get it after all these years and they just think that i'm just lagging on chatting on and whatever and just they just keep saying shut up shut up just play the music shut up and i'm like it's a fucking podcast you know what i'm saying you know people just lose in the name <laughs> what a podcast is you know what i mean uh yeah, that, I, that yeah. this is me after uh, the ongoing sort of people still not getting what i'm trying to do um it's not a mix if you want to mix go on youtube or go on soundcloud you find loads of fucking mixes this is a podcast <laughs> all right again brian i can completely relate i host a dj battle show right and i have djs come on and battle each other and uh -huh. before they take it in turns i have a chat with them i can't tell you how many people have viewers well not lots, but some are like, get on with it. But All right, you know stop. what? Like, my labour manager just keeps saying, like, we do, from, the one we're doing post and all that, like, he always says, keep it short. I'm like, why keep it short? Because people only got, a, like, a, a couple of second span of looking at things, like, and I'm like, why? You know? Oh, because that's just, uh, they just, that's how they are. I'm like, why are they, why can't they look at something for more than a minute? Why is your, your time span so fucking, like, Cause like if we do things like um well, another rant that I put over there is, is after movie clips after um when we do parties and all that the um the 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 promoters or the people whatever that they they do these things called after bloody movies right and it's like they 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 end up they end up recording the old bloody event but all you get back is five minutes of it right dubbed with some music that is not even the music from the fucking event. It's some different music dubbed <laughs> over and they just tried to get like three minutes of eight hours of partying into three minutes. Mm. And that's what they're giving you with the music that's not even fucking played on the night. And I'm like, what is these after? Why can't they just give us the old sets or longer of the original sets? Oh, people don't have time to look on the internet. And um, people are on the fucking internet all day and all fucking night. That's all they fucking do. Look on the fucking internet. So how can they not have time more than three minutes to look at a fucking thing? Oh, people just want to move on. And I'm like, Right. Well, I can. Well, first of all, I remember the days oh, where yeah, we could yeah. wait for the VHS to come out of something like World Dance, so we could watch the whole the thing. Whole thing. <laughs> Two you hours. For yourself. Oh, that was me. I remember that. Two oh, hours. <laughs> now we got three minutes of some fucking after movie with some cheap music that is nothing to do with the party or whatever, and it's just yeah. like it's all. I don't know, man. It's just like, and they just. You know, you don't even get no real juice out of watching these things because it's just all just like... Too superficial. All, yeah. And yeah. they're like, don't take us for idiots, man. We're not stupid. We don't want to see this shit. We want to see what the, what really went down. Yes, yeah. There's some exactly. real footage. Yeah. And this fucking up the movie shit. Now I probably won't get booked for none of these raves anymore. No, <laughs> no, no, no. But again, Brian, like I've got, I've got, a, I've got a comeback for that. I've got a solution because I like to be solution focused. 
And like I said, getting the rants out, getting the conversation going, you can come to solutions. So I'm I, part time. I'm doing a degree in uh, media psychology. So literally what you've just talked about is one of the areas that I'm studying and I'm really fascinated. And there are these statistics that you hear about, especially on social media, where, oh, people have their uh, retention is X, Y, Z. And, you know, there was that um, Netflix documentary about dopamine and, and social media and how it skewed our brain chemistry. But guess what? We, it's, it's up to us. It's like we're lab rats or, or, or mice in a lab. Yeah. So we've been conditioned to get shorter and shorter attention spans. We can go the other way. It's not one way or the high, you know what I mean? So actually, so these people that are saying you have to do things shorter and shorter and shorter, what are we doing? We're conditioning people's brains to be able to retain less and less and less yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and less and less and less. So if I mean, we actually give long form content, guess what's going to happen? Yeah. The other thing. So it's again, it's in it's our power. People, and if they don't want to watch it anymore, then they can switch off. At least they've got the choice. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Give us a choice because you know what I mean. If like if I miss the party, I don't want to see a three minute after movie of of an eight hour party yeah. because I'm not going to get no juice out of that. Juice, exactly. You want the juice. <laughs> you want the moment. You want, that. you want the moment. What we're going to do now because I feel like we've we've got some stuff off our chest. I think we we're, we're aligned with with everything actually, which is good. Um, I would like to hit, as you said, like you've been running, obviously, we're celebrating B30, big ups for that. Huge achievement. And um, you've been going a lot longer than that. So I want you to cast your mind back over your whole career and give us uh, one or two stories. So you just mentioned juice. I want those juicy stories, you know, maybe oh. something really funny, something's gone wrong, uh, dish in the dirt, anything that you want to share. Oh, man, no, you can't, I've got, I don't know, you're just throwing this on me now, man. <laughs> So we've had the rant, now it's the ban. So the banter is whatever you can think of that just, it could be something that you've seen at a gig that's just made you giggle. Um, it could be a situation, uh, anything, anything from your years of running the label, anything from your years as a DJ in clubs, anything at all, but something that's made you giggle. Oh my gosh. Oh God, no! You know what? People are better telling me things that I've done right than me remembering things. You know, Is, as well as people, uh, what what are people. you known for then? What do people laugh at you for? I'm known for get. I'm known for forgetting everything, right? I mean, my my partner Frost has written a book, right? The reason I can't do that because I can't remember a thing, right? I just I can't. I and mean, you know, he's anybody who knows me is testimony to that. Brian has got the worst memory in history i can't remember anything i mean the amount of times i've got to blag it when i'm talking to people just to find out who their names are again i'm like you know what i mean i have to say to my girl sometimes go and talk to him or go and talk to her and just say what's your name so i can remember that person's name again right? because... make her look bad so that you can look good right <laughs> <laughs> no because i'm 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 supposed to have known that person's name i've known them that long ago and it's like you know, you see them and you're there chatting and you're, you're thinking, I can only blag this for, I can't blag this for too long. You know what I'm saying? Soon I'm going to get caught out if I don't, you know what I mean, know the name and all that because I'm pretending like, yeah, I, I do. And then I'll say to my girls, oh, my friend, try and get the name out of this person. Ask this person, this is my friend, just introduce, when I introduce you to them, just say, what's your name again? So I can hear, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's a good technique. That's a good technique. All right. So when I when I'm speaking to Frosty tomorrow, he'll tell you shit that I've that I've popped up on, or because Frosty's got he's the one that's got he's written the book, so you know he he remembers everything. Wicked. So he's, in the book, he's written things in the book that I can't even remember that we did. You get him saying so, you know? Yeah, I'm terrible, really bad. So in that yeah, in that case. Yeah. Would you be up for the whole? Um, oh, what, what have they called the new neural link? The, the um, oh, what's his face? Elon Musk. You know what he wants oh, to do? For Twitter. Yeah, yeah. The guy that ran it. He he's looking. He's been doing lots of research into like basically microchips and things that can help you with your memory. But how would you feel? I mean, it's very sci-fi, isn't it? So 
to to prevent people losing their memories with um you know obviously there's things like dementia hor horrible illnesses so preserving people's memories but obviously that that involves a lot of trust to be able to do that before you get to that stage as someone who who says they struggle with their memory is that something that would be of interest to you down the track if it helps if it helps i'll give it a go would you yeah. would you I'll give my go if it helps anything because <laughs> it, it, it does it does surprise me the amount of times I'm with people and they tell me juicy stories about me that I cannot remember I'm like really Brian but then the more they go into it the more I know I'm like oh yeah oh yeah I completely forgot so you know I've done I lived a crazy life and I can't remember that's how that's how you know you've been living a crazy life when you can't fucking remember. <laughs> I think that's a sign of a good life, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so fucking crazy, right? Uh, I don't remember a bit about it. Everyone's got to tell me. And I'm like, wow, did I really like draw open wide when I'm hearing all these stories about me? I'm like, really? <laughs> Wicked. Well, I, I look forward to uh, getting a funny story from Frosty um, right. then about you. Um, so is there anything else before we wrap up our chat? I've got a few bits to do with you at the end, but is there anything else that you want to cover off? Any no, other things no, to get no. off your chest? Anything else about B30? No, I, 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 I think we've done enough ranting. I haven't <laughs> ranted with your rants, right? So like, you know what I'm saying? you got to be <laughs> ranting now, you know? I want to oh. be I want to be seen as a positive, happy guy. You are. Yeah, You've laughed all the way through this. I'm happy with the world, man. See you know what I'm saying? Go hug a tree. No. <laughs> I'll leave that for Frosty. Yeah. <laughs> he likes to connect with the earth and do all that stuff. <laughs> he does. He does. I always say before I go, I just want to say big, big shout to all the artists on the label, man, because you guys bring the fire and make V what it is, man. You know what I mean? Right through from Ronnie Size, Die, Crossed, um, you know, uh, DJ Marky, Pativ, Dillinger. You know, the new cuts, you know, Alibi, L Side, Slater, Command Strange, Artificial Intelligence, you know, list goes so on. Many. And there's just so many. I could just be here all day, man. And they're, they're the guys that bring the bring the fire to the label, man. And Paul T, Ed Oberon. I mean, big love, man. Yeah, that's all I want to say before I go, man, because, you know, B wouldn't be B without all my artists, man. And so, um, yeah, and just, yeah, big up to the crew, man. Uh, you know, I can't wait to see you guys doing our mix and our stuff. And, yeah, it sounds good. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. And, yeah, like, you've got, obviously, you've got Marky and Elside and Alibi as well repping on Twitch. So, uh, yeah. yeah, you've got so much love and support. And I'm really looking forward to uh, showing you the stuff and getting your reactions. Because it's all, it's all, it's just nice to see a different, I know you got, you know, you're at your festivals and your raves and you see your reactions in that way, but it's kind of nice to hear and see reactions when people aren't drunk, they're not on anything. They're literally just there for the love of the music, you know? And it's a whole age route. We've got people that are 18. We've got people that are uh, 60. It's a hot, Twitch is a real, real range of ages. Thank you so much for your time. I hope that wasn't painful for you. I hope that you actually enjoyed no, it. it. It was fun, man. I hope I didn't seem too angry, though, yeah? No, mate, you're smiling and laughing all the way through, just like I do. So that's what it's about. It's just about seeing something a little bit different from someone. So big oh. ups. Thank you so oh. much. And, um, yeah, I look forward to speaking to Frosty and uh, getting a funny story from him. <laughs> Be forever, yeah? Be forever. Peace out, mate. Right, Bye. Care, yeah? Bye. Yeah. In the lead up to this, I realised, oh, it's my 30th celebration of being interested in the scene and part of the scene because I started listening to the music in 1993 when I was at school. I went to my first rave uh, in 1994, so I was 15, <laughs> but I got away with it. And no, it's I, really. Eh? No, it's really. Well, you know, yeah, it was well danced. It was Lid Airport. It was the best day of my life. It was just and, and a lot of people went to a lot of people went to their first rave was actually Lid Airport. It's so many different people. Well, I'm from Ashford in Kent. Well, there you go. So it was it was my local, but then soon yeah. after it was Crystal Palace for reincarnation and so on and so forth. And yeah, that was it. My 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 love was from that point onwards. So I, I was like, oh, we're celebrating V30, but it's also my 30-year celebration. What is your rant? 
I don't have to think. Um, my, what, you know what, what I was thinking about yesterday, I was actually talking to Brian about it. Because it's like, have you, not, have you noticed, like, at Christmas time, right, you have, like, the quality streets and, and suites and stuff like that. The, seat, the boxes seem to have got smaller, but the prices are still the same. Well, prices sometimes have gone up, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So the content that's in the packet has gone down, but they're, 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 still, ripping, they're still ripping the arse out of us with the money. Do you know what I mean? That's my yeah. rant. And, it, yeah. and it, they're, they're doing it, like, on they're doing it on all my little biscuits at Christmas. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm looking now thinking, you know, they're going to rip me up again this year, yeah? That's that's my rant. Do you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm quite... I'm quite... Um, I'm quite... Um, what, what can I say? Disgruntled about it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, I, I, you know what I mean? It's something that every year I just think about it and I think these cunts, they're doing it every year and they're just, it's, these packets are getting smaller and smaller. And they're they taking it away. massive, those tins, didn't they? So it's massive. Now it's like, it's like they've got these little kind of, little kind of, the, they've kind of shrunk the box and everything, but the price is still more, it's more expensive than it's ever been. What about the packet packets of crisps? You open them. Yeah, you open it. It's like a half a fucking packet. Like, what the fuck? Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like come on, guys. You, you're making millions out of us. And the, the, and the, the packet say, yeah, you, when you open it, when you go like that, it seems, when you open the packet, there's like half a packet of crisps in there. Like, <laughs> how's that fair? It's not fair, but what can we do about that? It's not fair at all. Do you know what I mean? Unfortunately, these guys have got a monopoly on it. Do you know what I mean? And and I don't know, in 20, 10 years, what, we're going to have a hot quarter of a packet? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. You know, a piss, mate, to be honest. What about some, um, like, some frost crisps? You know, you could make, like, a big, big bag, decent that's size. Something, that's something that I, I, I'm definitely thinking about. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, you know, obviously... I've kind of gone into this kind of market where I'm selling drinks now. And yeah, I, I saw, I recently saw Snoop Dogg and Master P. They've got like cereal and stuff. Okay. Yeah, they've got like Master P and Snoop Dogg have got like, like cereal. Do you know what I mean? And I'm looking at that thinking, that's a big market, cereal. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I could do some cereal. Do you know what I mean? Frosty Flakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would work. It would work, but I don't think it's yeah. with your health and well-being vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From we can get some really, like, frosty bran flakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now I need to have your Bantz story. So we're going to get two from you. We're going to get your best banter story from your career. So it could be something funny that you've seen, something that's happened to you, something that's just made you laugh, something that's gone wrong, anything. And then because Mr. Brian G had a had, had a blank yesterday and couldn't think of one, he said that you'd think of one for him, a funny story about him. So right. starting with you, what's your banter story? All right, well, funniest banter story. I tell you. The first thing that comes to mind, I was at Kiss, right? Well, I was a, I was at Kiss and Friend for like eight years. So once I was interviewed, I was interviewing Todd Terry. I was interviewing Todd Terry, and Todd comes in. He's the first time I ever met him, and I'm like, I'm in awe. Like, Todd, Todd's coming. I'm like, oh my god, Todd. So I'm interviewing him. We're talking and everything, and then I go to press the next record. Oh my god, the record's not even queued up. Yeah, oh, no, it's not even queued up. So I've got to continue talking to Todd while doing this, and this is the vinyl days. Yeah, while I've got to go like that, put a record on, go like this. And all while talking to Todd, yeah? And Todd's looking at me like, are you really doing this? <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I swear to God, I was like this, do you know what I mean? And at the end, Todd was like, man, you're the guy, man. And I was like, you know, I felt quite good about it, but oh my God, that was just so nerve-wracking, yeah? <laughs> <My word. laughs> oh, that's brilliant. But no, it's yeah, at 7 o'clock in the evening. No, eight, this is like 8.30 in the evening. Do you know what I mean? Crazy. But, you know, if it meant that he saw what you did and then respected you, then that, that was a good thing oh, to happen. Oh, I'd rather not even see like that. That was just like, oh, my. Because I'm talking to him, and I'm like this, and I'm not even looking. So I'm looking, I don't even, and I've got a tune, and I'm like this at the same time, and I'm talking. I'm about to move the mic around, and, and, and we're live on the radio. And so I'm like, <laughs> but you've got to just, come on, and just go through and put it on, da, 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 and still be talking. Oh, my word. It was just like, oh. 
It's, I can imagine that because you said that you're not good at multitasking. So there you were. In that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done for coming through it um, uh, relatively unscathed. All right. So um, what would be your best banter story about Brian G? Oh, my God, there's so many. Um, all right. The first time we go, we're doing, we're doing like the V Classics tour. Um, we, we get set, we get, we, we're on a, we, it's the last, last leg of the tour, Los Angeles. So we get to LAX, get off the flight, Brian's lost his passport, yeah? Oh my God, he's lost his passport, yeah? So we have to wait, and this is after, and we have to wait for them to get everyone off the plane, for them to clean the plane. And then they find a passport in the little glove thing, and you know, in the seat, the little glove thing, the thing. They find a passport in there, and they bring it out. That is like I was like, P. and that's just that's the first of many, yeah, incident. So I, I'll say that one because that was the first of many. Oh it's, God, is he it, known, does he leave stuff everywhere? Then is that what he's known for? Being prone to lose a phone or two, just like myself. But yeah, I think B's got the edge on me slightly. <laughs> <laughs> little, little bit forgetful. Oh, that's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I just, I love the fact that I, I was like, you got any banter stories? He was like, there, there's loads, but you're going to have to ask someone else because I yeah. forget everything. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah.